Okay. Matthew Barber, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, B-A-R-B-O-U-R. I am the regional manager uh, for New Mexico Historic Sites, uh, overseeing Coronado and Jemez Historic Site. Tell us about this find here at Coronado. So for about the last year and a half, since August of 2017, we've been conducting a metal detector survey on the property of Coronado Historic Site. Uh, the metal detector survey was conducted by Clay Mathers of the Coronado Institute out of Albuquerque. He's been looking for evidence of the Coronado expedition here at the site. Coronado Historic Site obviously prides itself as being one of the places Coronado came to in the winter of 1540-1541. However, up until this point, there had been no real documented hard evidence, archaeological evidence, that Coronado had visited specifically this site. And we're very pleased to announce that now, a year and a half into the metal detector survey, we've collected quite a number of artifacts associated with the Coronado expedition and an attack on the village here known as Qualar, Evergreen Pueblo. What did those artifacts find? So those artifacts include carrot-headed nails, uh, copper uh, bolt heads for crossbow bolts, uh, lead shot, probably associated with arquebus fire, a kind of early form of musket, uh, as well as a number of small pieces of jewelry and personal effects, and a small fragment of armor, Spanish armor, Spanish chainmail. What makes you think those were here, uh, there was Coronado and not some other expedition? Yeah. So later expeditions primarily focused on um, firearms. Coronado was the last expedition into the, or the first expedition and last expedition into the American Southwest that used crossbows in any large quantities. Other Coronado sites have been documented to places such as Hawaku out by Zuni and Pedros Mercados in Albuquerque have revealed large numbers of these copper uh, tipped crossbow bolts in the past. These artifacts appear to be the kind of uh, diagnostic attribute we'd most like to find associated with the Coronado expedition. The other one is carrot-headed nails. Carrot-headed nails are kind of an L-shaped nail um, or T-shaped nail that was very popular up until the mid-16th century. Later expeditions in the 1580s and the Oñate expedition appear to have moved away from those technologies, once again focusing on um, musketry or, 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 or uh, firearms, ma matchlock firearms, as their main weapon against Native American peoples. What happens from here? Um, so we're, we're still, uh, research is in progress. We are still conducting the metal detector survey. However, at this point of our 125 acres, we have approximately covered, I, I want to say about 80 of those acres. So we're about two thirds done with our cultural resource inventory at the site. Uh, for metal detector artifacts. These materials will then be compared with other, other artifacts from other sites that had expeditions associated with Coronado Adam. So uh, materials such as our musket balls, lead isotope analysis will be conducted to compare and contrast the musket balls with, with Qual, our Coronado historic site, with other sites in the American Southwest, as well as with military sites in, uh, New, throughout New Spain and in, in Europe as well. So briefly summarize for me the significance of what we're telling people today. Okay. So for a long time, people have have known that Coronado was in the area. That was never a really big surprise. Here at Koala, the debate had always been, well, maybe since we didn't have evidence here, that maybe the people at Koala Pueblo, at Coronado Historic Site, just left. The discretion was the better part of valor. That, they, that when Coronado came in with his army of several hundred Spaniards and, and, and probably over a thousand Native American allies, that they just ran to the hills. Um, the artifacts that we, we found at Coronado Historic Site within the last year tell a very, very different story. They tell a story of military force being used to subdue this village. Exactly what kind of battle it was, whether it was a skirmish, whether it was a demonstration of force by the Spanish, we don't necessarily know. But the large numbers of Spanish metal artifacts, such as the musket balls and the chain mail, along with Native American weapons, such as uh, war mauls, axes, and sling stones, represent a battle. People resisted here at Koala. They resisted at most Pueblos in the American Southwest. Even when, when confronted with overwhelming military force, they still chose to resist and protect their, their native lands and their native traditions. It, it may not have worked out well in, in many instances, but it's a story that needs to be told. Thank you.
anything else you want to add? Um, you are oh, okay. Our, um, the materials we are collecting now, and that we we are we are proud to share with the public, we hope to plan to have on display at Coronado Historic Site in the summer of 2019. So, it's good. Of different uh, native auxiliaries that are coming from different tribes, they have different languages. So you're coming up and you're doing that, you cannot see, if you're ta attacking the south wall, you can't see what's going on in the west wall. Because this thing's slight in a way that you don't understand until you take into account some of these, you know, kind of what look like relatively minor parts of the architecture, but they aren't. They're clever. They're really you know, understanding some things that people understood in the medieval period in Europe. To Another aspect of that is uh, brawn gravel terraces. If you need sling stones, you don't have to go outside to get them. <laughs> so people are just digging a hole, and they can just keep chucking this stuff at you. And if